Hi dreamers and make believers, in today's video I'm going to be telling you about my recent reads. Now, as many of you know, I was trying to read um, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child for a very long time and I got sidetracked by An Ember in the Ashes because that was just phenomenal and just stole all my attention away. But I am pleased to announce that I have finally finished Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. I actually was going to say An Ember in the Ashes. Okay, I've actually finished Harry Potter and the Cursed Child at last. Um, so, my thoughts and my feels. So, um, well, obviously, it took me a while to get through at first because I was reading Ember in the Ashes, and that kind of stole all my attention. So, you know, that does kind of say that I obviously didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed Ember in the Ashes. Um, it was different, of course, because it was a script, but I kind of feel like, hmm, what do I feel? What do I feel about this? Um... I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I love getting back into the Harry Potter world and the Wizarding world and seeing Hogwarts and all the old familiar lovable characters. I really, really enjoyed that. But I felt that the characters had changed way too much. I mean, okay, it's been 19 years, but, you know, they were, they were like strangers, some of them. Like, I, hmm. So I, uh, so I really liked the story. And liked this book and I, it's still one of my favorites of 2016 because it's a new Harry Potter and it's another look into the world and I got to meet his kids and that was all great but I felt like the plot could have been something completely different and more captivating I felt like I wanted to see more of the world as it is now like as the wizarding world as it is today rather than what happens in this book I won't spoil it for those that haven't read it but it's not as current. <laughs> okay, I don't know how to explain it without telling you what exactly happens, but basically I feel that uh, I, I would give this a 3.5 purely because it's a new Harry Potter and I'm glad to get back into that world. And um, and it were cute and nice and uh, it was really interesting reading a script and stuff like that, but just the story, the plot, I felt could have been something else that could have been a little bit more captivating and, woo, you know, it's Harry Potter. Could have been anything. Could have been anything. So I really enjoyed it, but it was not as phenomenal as I expected. And yeah, I expected to, to devour it in like a few days. And of course, as you know, guys, it took me a few weeks. So, so not disappointed at all. But um, if J.K. Rowling, you feel like making another Harry Potter, make it a current Harry Potter, as in what's happening in the Wizarding World today. No, no, you know. No, none of that. Okay, so that's, um, that was Harry Potter. That, that was really nice. Um, and then I read, now I put a video up not long ago maybe like a couple of weeks ago about this Heart of the Mirage saga and I my plan was to hopefully read all three of them in September. Now it's only halfway through September so I might but of course I've gotten sidetracked by other books. So I have managed to read the first one in the series which is Heart of the Mirage. Wait. Oh excuse the lighting in this today. I'm trying something different. I'm gonna see how it works out and if not then you know I'll try something else next time. So Heart of the Mirage but wait a minute. There we are. So, Heart of the Mirage by Glenda, Glenda Lark. Yes, Glenda Lark. Um, so, this is the story. Um, it's not YA fantasy. It's, um, it's fantasy, obviously, it's me. Um, but it's not YA fantasy. I think it's adult fantasy or... Yeah, it's adult fantasy. Yeah, the main character, I think she's about 29 or something. So, it's adult fantasy. It's really interesting and unique. So, it's about these people um, called who live in, no, these people with powers that live in this place called Kadiastan, and then there's this empire or kingdom called Tehran. Yeah, Tehran. And the Tehranians are, like, trying to make slaves out of everybody and take over all the worlds, but Kadiastan have powers, and they're saying, like, no, uh-uh, you are not coming and taking over my world and my powers, and so it's, it's leading up to a big war, and, um, and there's this woman that's a Tehran, she's a Kadiastan, she was born in Kadi. Kadian, Kadiestan, something like that. Yeah, she was born in this other magical world or empire land, and but when she was really young, her parents, you know, were killed, and she had to. She ended up getting adopted by a Tyranian. So she's kind of torn between both worlds: what she originally was or is, and then what she was 
has become because of being like adopted. So, uh, and it's her kind of struggle and story into her roots and who she is and what she could be and you know is she gonna do it is she gonna portray like her her parents that were like her real like her her adopted parents to like be who she was supposed to be with her you know real parents uh, it's so it's really interesting and there's love and there's mystery and there's lots and lots of magic so i really enjoyed this wait again heart of the mirage i really enjoyed have the mirage and i gave it a uh 4.5 stars. Um, some parts I felt were a little long-winded and some parts I felt um, could have been a bit more active. And I feel like because it's part of a series, um, a lot of stuff that seemed to happen in this book that amounted to not much is probably going to amount to a lot in the second book. And that was kind of like this, this setup. So um, a 4.5 because I really did enjoy it. I really thought it was very good but not a five because I felt like some parts of it could have been more like oomph but then again at the same time I'm a lover of young adult fantasy and young adult fantasy is like bam 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 so it's very possible that it's just a different kind of style genre than I'm used to so that's why I didn't find it as boom boom as I like but not necessarily like it has to be so um yes yeah, so I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars and then I was supposed to read the second in the series, but of course I got sidetracked by one that I really wanted to read for a very, very long time. So I'm glad that I finally did. And that was Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo. So let's have a look at the gloriousness. The gloriousness. Okay, so this one, as you can probably tell by its little introduction, I actually really, really enjoyed. And I'm so glad that I finally read it because it's been on my shelf for months. Like, um, I think it's been on my shelf for about three months. I mean, I've got a lot of books that have been on my shelf for longer than that. But I really wanted to read Shadow and Bone because I read Six of Crows and I just loved it. And then I found out that she did Shadow and Bone. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I've heard about this Christian trilogy. Let me look into it. And I actually really, really enjoyed it. This one, okay, so this one, I mean, most of you probably already know. But this is the story of Alina Starkov. And it's really sweet and romantic and cute, and I love it. But it's more than that. It's just like, ah! Okay, so there is a really cute and sweet romantic uh, love story between her and and the guy that she, like, grew up with. She's an orphan, and he was an orphan, and they were in an orphanage together by this duke. And they kind of grew up together, and some people in this world have powers, and some people in this world don't have powers. And, um, and, uh, oh! Okay, so it follows Alina... A story so she's in love with this guy her best friend who she grew up with and it's really cute and it's really sweet but of course you know he just sees her as a best friend and she, she's like what the hell you know notice me but then she doesn't feel like she deserves to be noticed because she's like wasting away into nothing um and let me just double check because i don't want to spoil anything okay so it's really it's on the back cover so yes yeah, so she finds out that she has powers so he doesn't have powers his name is mal yeah, his name is Mal. He doesn't have powers, but Alina does have powers, and she discovers that later on in this, like, intense epic scene. Um, so, of course, they get taken apart from each other um, because he doesn't have powers, and she does, so she has to go and train with the Grisha and learn to control her powers. And then there's this other guy called the Darkling. You know how young adult likes it's through, like, it's, uh, not it's trilogies. It's triangles. It's love triangles. So, of course, there's, like, another guy, and he's a darkling, and he's all-powerful, and he's, like, you know, the opposite of Mal, and, you know, everybody loves him, and he's the best, and, of course, then you start shipping, you know, is it the darkling and Alina? Are you going to go for Mal and Alina, the boy that she loved since she grew up, and he didn't really notice her, and, you know, what's going to happen there? So, um, that story... That love story kind of tugs at your heartstrings because you don't know what she's going to do. You don't know if Mal's ever going to find her again. And you don't know. You just don't know. And then, of course, there's the actual epic story of Alina's power and what that power means for the for the Empire. Um, what is it called? It's the Grisha. It's like the Grisha Empire. Ah. Oh, it's not that. Okay, there's the world, but for some reason the world is not mentioned on the back cover. But there's a world, uh, I forgot the name of it, which is really annoying me. Um, but you know what, I'm just going to show you the map, because it has a map, and I love books with maps. So it has a map, and it's so good, like it's so um, detailed, and you can just, you can really immerse yourself in the world. So, Rafka, Sibia, Jerda, I don't know, maybe it doesn't actually say 
the name of the the whole empire, but those are like the different places they live. Ravka, I love Ravka. So, um, so she's taken away to this other part, and it's about how she and her powers can save or destroy this world. So it becomes a story of whether or not she will, and uh, and the reasons for her power being able to do that, and yada yada yada. But again, I'm gonna drift on to spoilers, so I don't want to do that. So I'm gonna stop. But I, I highly recommend it. So I gave this book a five, and the next book in the series is Siege and Storm, which I am gonna start very soon. But I just like to dip my toes into everything because I'm greedy like that. So I've read the first one of The Heart and Mirage, I've read the first one of Shadow and Bone, and now I'm actually finally on the first one of Percy Jackson. Yes! Which is The Lightning Thief. Like, this series has been going on for I don't know how long. I mean, there's a million books, like, now, and I have just started the first one, but I'm very, very excited about it. I'm enjoying it a lot, and I'm reading, like, through it quite fast, so I imagine that my next video will probably be my opinion on Percy Jackson. But, um, but yes, this one I gave a 5 out of 5, and I highly, highly recommend it. So, those are my three reads of September so far. Although I suppose I cheated because I started Harry Potter before, but I didn't finish it, so I, I, I read the bulk of Harry Potter in September, and I read all of Shadow and Storm, Shadow, Shadow and Bone, Shadow and Bone, Siege and Storm, the next one, Shadow and Bone, and Heart of the Mirage, I read them now, and it is the, it is currently, like, by the time I put this up, I think it's going to be around the 20th of September, because it's now, like, the, no, it's going to be earlier than that, it's now the, it's the 15th of September, and I'm going to put this up on Sunday. So, yeah. So, by the 15th, so halfway through September, I've read I've read these. So, hopefully, my next wrap-up will be Percy Jackson and Siege and Storm, I imagine, and possibly the next one in the Heart of Mirage saga. Um, unless something else steals my attention, because those of you that have been following me on Instagram know that I went book shopping a couple of days ago in Kinokunya, which is like a huge book world. It's full of, full of, full of gorgeous books. And I got... Well, actually, from there, I only got six books. I wanted to get um, ten. Well, see, I got eight books in total that day, but two books I got from Borders and six books I got from Kinokunya. The reason I didn't get those two books in Kinokunya was because I actually put myself on the list. Oh, and I think I mentioned this to you guys before, Red Rising and The Crown's Game. So I put myself on the list for those two books um, like a while ago in Borders near my house. And so it was actually in the morning that I was going to Kinokunya and I got a call from Borders saying, hey, by the way, your books have arrived. So like turned the car around and went to that mall and got those two. So that was like such a good way to start book day because I was like, it's book day, I'm going to go get books. And I, um, I did. So in that day I got eight books, but I did want to get about 11, but there was Empire of Storms which sold out. Of course. Of course it did. It just came out, but of course it sold out. So there was Empire of Storms, which I didn't get because it sold out. And uh, there was Ice Like Fire, which I believe is the first one, or Snow Like Ashes. No, I think it's Ice Like Fire is the first one, which I've heard really good things about, but they only had one of those, and it looked like it was like the last weary one that, you know, had been battered and bruised and nobody wanted. So I didn't want to get that because I like my books to look pretty and new. And then there was also something else. Oh, what was it? There was another book that I wanted that I couldn't find either. Oh, ah, okay. City of Heavenly Fire. So that is like the number six in the Mortal Instruments series by Cassandra Clare, who is, you know, amazing. And um, I have been looking everywhere for book six because now I can find book six. I mean, finding book six is not the problem. But I cannot find the cover that I want, okay? I want the original cover with the, like the half torso body things on it and, you know, no faces like, you know, Mm, I am Mortal Instruments. That is what I want. But no, everyone has these new ones with like the, the, the drawings and stuff and, and the black and white. And I don't mind it. Those are lovely covers. But I want to complete my first set, which I have the first five in the original covers. And then number six cannot be just random new cover. It just won't look right. It, no, I need to find the original cover. So I found City of Heavenly Fire, but I did not get it because it's not the right cover. So I will hunt that one down. Or I'm going to put myself on a waiting list again and be like, find me the original cover and bring it to me. Bring it to me. So so those were the, the books that I did not get. Um, and I got a lot of other books, but I got eight books. Red Rising and Crown's Game were two of them. I also got Queen of Shadows. Now, for those of you who know, I was boycotting the Throne of Glass series after Air of Fire because 
it hurt me. Um, I've gotten braver. I've read lots of other books that have like inspired me to, you know, just take the plunge. And of course, A Court of Mist and Fury is probably like one of my favorite books ever. So, you know, just for the love of Sarah J. Maas and the love of like Selena Sadovian from like the original Throne of Glass before it went to this other tangent before it did that i really really loved it so i just thought you know what everyone's raving about it empire of storms is coming out like let me just do it so i've got queen of shadows so you know i don't actually have a rush to get to empire storms i just want it but yes yeah, so i'm gonna i got queen of shadows so i'm gonna be reading that and we'll definitely be guys i will definitely be letting you guys know if i feel like i'm gonna continue but i think just for love of sarah j mass and for the characters i'm probably just gonna have to read it and find out what happens but um I do really, really hope that it, like, I hope it surprises me just like, and I'm like, yes, this is what I wanted, because, yeah, Error Fire did not deliver what I wanted. It was good. It was good. It just, it hurt me, and it's taken me a while now to actually go to the bookstore and pick up Queen of Shadows. I mean, I've been to the bookstore and seen it lots and lots of times, and I just haven't got it. But anyway, so I got that, and then I got The Final Empire, and I got, uh, which is that Mistborn Saga, I got Fallen Kingdoms, which I've heard so much about, I got, um... Oh, Rebel of the Sands, which I've heard is really good. And I actually put it, like put this all up on my Instagram, of course. And um, the author of Rebel of the Sands, Al 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 Alwyn, Alwyn, Alwyn or Alwyn, um, she actually like um, liked the pictures. So I just love it when authors do that. So that was really fun. Um, and uh, and yeah, so great chatting with you. Um, let me know what you think of the books that I've read and the books that I've mentioned. Uh, please do follow me on Instagram because I love interacting on that. I think that book photos are just stunning. So if you have a book account, definitely, definitely let me know. Um, and mm, that's all. I hope you have a great day. Um, and yeah, like I said, I don't know about this lighting. I'm going to try and figure it out. Uh, it's all new. But uh, have a great day. Bye. And I'm going to press stop.